Hi everyone, this is Mehul Mehta and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this video, I really want uh, to walk you through about, you know, about my journey of how I transitioned from being an electronic engineer to someone who, you know, came into quant finance. So, you know, in my last semester of engineering, so I did my electronics engineering from BIT University, Bellore. So in my last year of engineering, um, you know, I got this opportunity to work at PwC in the risk and regulatory department. Now, most of the folks, you know, or most of the students I interact with, their first question is, I want to transition into quant finance. I'm in my last year of engineering. How can I do that? Now, understand one thing that at least the mindset and uh, mindset of firms in India is they want to hire from uh, IITs, uh, you know, top IITs, not just IITs, top IITs for all the quant related roles, specifically quant trader, quant researcher, quant developer. So mostly all these trading firms are going to IITs and they try to hire them. Now you as a fresher or you as someone who really wants to enter into the field of quant finance, being an engineer or, you know, someone with relatable background you you think that okay now you don't have any you know any um, stance because you're not from a tire tire one university and let's say you belong to a tire two tire three university so what should you do see the action or the thing that you can do is don't just focus on quant related roles i would say just focus on maybe focus on risk related roles there are a lot of uh, engineers who works into credit risk market risk space and you know entering into those roles are much easier as compared to a quant role because the number of competition is less plus uh, it is easy uh, for you as a fresher to gain the knowledge of risk as compared to you know uh, different complicated topics of quantitative finance so i would say instead of going directly into quant finance what you can do is go through the risk route, you know, enter into market risk or enter into credit risk and then and, and through that enter into quant finance. And that's what I also did. So when I got my internship, it was into credit risk. So, I mean, the, the department was risk and regulatory, but of course, I initially interned with in, into the credit risk department. There we were building different models and they were using a lot of data science, machine learning, which I was already good at. So, you know, for me, grabbing a credit risk role was comparatively easy as compared to a quant finance role. So I would first thing is I would really want all of you to make sure that if in case you are not getting any quant related interviews or quant related roles, that's totally fine. Go through the risk route because a lot of quants also work into risk. So I would say, you know, spend maybe an year. I'm not saying spend like five years, 10 years into risk and then shift to quant. No. There are a lot of cons who also work into the risk space, okay? So I would say maybe spend one year, uh, you know, at least go into the field of uh, risk, credit risk, market risk, and explore that. Also, I would say, let's say if you are someone who is into who is in the first year of engineering or second year of engineering, I highly recommend, please start preparing for FRM level one, FRM level two. If you study FRM level one and level two, I'm telling you, you are actually covering a lot of coursework of quant finance. So if I, I was just, you know, recently reading uh, FRM level one, level two syllabus, and I saw that the, there are so many chapters, which I was, uh, you know, which I studied back in my master's in quant finance. So I would say, even if you pursue FRM level one and level two, that's a great starting point for you to enter into risk. Now, you know, I do receive certain things that, you know, certain, you know, complaints or you can say uh, a reason from students that, you know, we are not getting time. We are not getting time to, you know, take the exam seriously. That's totally fine. If you do, if you even do not want to go and attend the exam, that is fine. Just read the material, study the material, build projects. See, I'm not saying that, okay, you know, the best thing is, of course, go and clear FRM level one and FRM level two so that you have a FRM certification. Being an engineer, having an FRM certification is a big thing if you are an undergrad student. And if in case you don't want to give any certification, because I know it's like one lakh rupees, it also costs a lot of money. And you know, you as students don't want to invest that much of money. That's fine. Just order books. I guess um, if you want to order books, order books. If you want to take, you know, online coaching, take online coaching. There are so many coaching providers in India 
and i'm not saying that go and pay like 30000 40000 even in 10000 rupees you know you can get frm level 1 even in 15000 and i was looking at this institute they provide frm level 1 level 2 at 25000 now see point is not see one thing you have to understand is all this money that you spend on education it's actually an investment it's not like oh you know i need to spend this that this no it's always an instant uh, investment and you will get return after a few years so my first suggestion is if you're in into your last semester of engineering of course you now you don't have time to clear frm level one level two so just go through the credit risk route enter into credit risk domain because that uses a lot of data science and machine learning so you can easily transition into credit risk and let's say if you have certain years i would say study frm level one level two and then try market risk roles because that is a better route you know to transition into quant finance so once you have gained like one two years of uh, uh, market risk experience so what you have to do is in this one two years you go and learn different con finance related topics you know so what you can do is study different topics study i would say if you if i really want you to study right i mean i would say just study this book option futures and derivatives by john c hull just study that book completely and you'll understand you know in much greater detail how quant modeling is done you know so and honestly 50 percent of the knowledge that i have gained is through uh, John C. Hull and other books. So I would highly recommend that please go and study Option Futures and Derivatives by John C. Hull. I'll also attach the description, uh, the, the name of the book in the description. So I would say in this one, two years when you are working at some institution, uh, study Con Finance and build seven to eight different projects related to Con Finance. What will happen when you build projects? It definitely learning is one thing which will happen. And at the same time, see, when I, I as a recruiter, right, when I see uh, certain resumes and it has like all, most of the relatable projects that are required for con finance, for me, it becomes so easy to hire you because you have worked on so many areas, right? So what I would suggest is in this one year, just make sure you work on a lot of con uh, related projects. You gain a lot of uh, understanding of different con finance topics so that you become good in your uh, craft so i would say this is one thing which i feel a lot of a uh, lot of my juniors or a lot of juniors i interact with are missing also if you have not seen my roadmap to uh you know roadmap to become a content 2025 that's a video that is in my youtube channel i highly highly recommend to watch that video because in that i've actually uh, you know uh, told which courses to buy and once I feel if you buy those courses, complete those courses, you'll have a great understanding of quantitative finance. So, so this is it. Uh, I would say, you know, if you uh, just to summarize, uh, uh, you know, I would say try to pursue FRM level one, level two certification. Uh, try to try to make like six to seven different con finance related projects and have those in your resumes because that will elevate your chance now a lot of students do ask me should i pursue cqf now cqf is twenty two thousand dollars the cost of pursuing cqf is twenty two thousand dollars if i'm not wrong and in india it's little less close to 10 lakh rupees uh you know uh, but 10 lakh rupees for a six month cohort is very expensive you know see if you were an industrial if you were working right at certain organization I would have actually, you know, motivated you to pursue CQF. Why? Because CQF is headed by Paul Wilmoth. Paul Wilmoth is one of the most influential person or you can say most influential author in con finance because um, he wrote this book, Paul Wilmoth on quantitative finance back in 2007-8. You know, when no one knew about con finance, he already published a book. So he is one of the most valuable person in the con finance industry in United States. Also, he's very valuable uh, person. He's, you know, he's really respected. But the only thing is it's very expensive. So I do not recommend this to a student because, of course, U.S. student cannot pay like 10 lakh rupees just for a six month cohort. And that's why I say go in industry, ask your employer to pay, you know, some amount of money so that you can save that amount of money. So don't worry on cqf there are a lot of other other places wherein see i always say that do certain boot camps i'm not saying like take expensive boot camps maybe have a budget you know every semester i'll let's say i'll spend 
five thousand rupees or let's say seven thousand rupees or ten thousand rupees on learning a con finance boot camp or learning something don't spend like fifty thousand one lakh that's a lot of money for you as a student right so spend some little little money uh, learning different uh, areas of con finance uh you if you see my roadmap video that i have posted on my youtube you know roadmap to become a content 2025 i have highlighted 6 7 course work which you as a con should learn so maybe try you know try go go uh, go go on to that video try purchasing those uh, boot camps that i have mentioned see always remember uh, education uh, is always an investment you get the benefit few years after you invest so it's not like you invest now and you get the return it is of course a compounding effect so i would say like that's how i also started i started my career into credit risk switched into market risk and then you know of course i was working on a lot of quant modeling projects and that's where you know i was not able to recollect or you can say i was not able to understand a lot of topics related to stochastic processes monte carlo simulations because these the, the, you know these topics were being used in in, in form of industry in industrial uh, setting and they were using a lot of complex uh, topics which i with no background was not able to understand and that's why i decided pursuing a masters would be much better for me and that's why i decided to come to us to pursue my masters so one thing that i would say is see if you plan to pursue a master it's a great decision but even if you do not plan to pursue and if you just want to learn i would say you know there are a lot of institutes in india go and try to pursue frm level one level two go into the risk management work for certain years and then jump to quant finance that is a much easy and uh, comfortable transition into quant finance as compared to you uh, directly applying for quant related quant trader quant you know all this quant related jobs so again i wish you all the best and i hope this video has helped you if you have if you have any doubts do post that in the comment section all the best